Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. A few weeks ago, I did a video where I looked at some papers that I'd recently purchased, and I did ask if anyone had recommendations. One of the recommendations was paper by Fabriano. I then found on Cult Pens this pack. This is a pack of seven different papers that are made by Fabriano. So I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. That gives me a chance to try out seven different papers with one purchase. So today we're going to take a look at these. We're going to do this by having a quick look at the paper, doing a writing sample with different pens and just seeing how they perform. So join me down on the mat and let's jump straight on in. So here we are down on the mat. These are the seven Fabriano notebooks that we're going to be taking a look at. We've got Velutata, which is feathery, Pergam Enata, parchment, Gofrata, embossed, Vergara, laid, ecological, which is recycled, natural, and Mercata, which is felt mat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compare them as my control paper. I'm going to use this endless recorder notebook, which has got 68 GSM Tomoy River paper. So Fabriano, it's actually a really old company. It dates back to 1264 when they started to create fine art papers and they were used by artists like Michelangelo. Now, a lot of the manufacturing techniques used for paper worldwide now were actually created within Fabriano. So it's a company that innovates and really drives the manufacturing processes. This pack that I bought, it's called the Fabriano Quaderno Bouquet Notebook Series. And as you can see, it's a bouquet of colors, bouquet of papers, and Fabriano, they describe it as the seven senses of paper. So I think it's going to be really interesting. So what we're going to be doing, as I'm clearing this off, is we're going to take a look at each one in turn. I'm going to start with the Tomai River because that's a paper that a lot of people are aware of. Now, I've already pre-written most of these ink samples we're going to look at because otherwise we spend ages and ages watching me write and we don't get any value from that. But just so that you're aware of what I've used, I've used a Diplomat Aero. This has got a broad nib and it's got Writer's Blood by Diamine. I've got a Pilot Custom Heritage 92. That's got a medium gold nib and it's got Robert Oster Tranquility. A Pen BBS 487 with a fine nib and Diamine Oxford Blue Ink. And finally, we've got the Twisby Eco, which has got that extra fine nib and Van Diemen Devil's Black. So as I say, I've pre-written with them. But what I have then got is I've got this one pen here this is a Visconti Breeze. This has got a broad nib. The ink in here is Noodler's Navajo Turquoise. And I'm going to use this to write on each of the different papers. The idea behind this is I'll be positioning the mic close to the paper so you can actually hear the pen write. One of the things I found when I was doing my preparation work for this is there's definitely different feedback and a different writing sound that was coming off each of the papers. So that's why I thought, well, this is a nice broad nib, nice bright ink, so we can actually do that part of it. Okay, let me clear these off. And I'm going to fetch in that endless recorder. As I said, this has got 68 GSM Tomoy River paper. So here's the writing I've done already. We've got this really dark red with that writer's blood. This is a very, very wet pen and ink combination. So much so, I've timed it at over two minutes and it's still wet. As you can see, you know, plenty of wetness coming off this. Each of my writing samples are pre-prepared. I've done a 10 seconds and then swiped over my hash and then one minute, just so we can get an idea for how long it takes to dry. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Love this colour, this Robert Oster Tranquility. You can see shading coming through here, you know, on the C, the E. So plenty of shading coming through. I was expecting to see that on this paper. As I say, this is a control paper, just so we get an idea what it is on paper that most people have either got or have at least seen. The Pen BBS 487, so we're moving then towards that fine nib. I do find it's a little bit wider than a fine, so it is tending towards medium, but it's a nice example. It's got this gorgeous dark blue color. Again, with our wetness, we can see here, after one minute on the Tomoy River, it's definitely dry. So as I say, it's a nice dark blue. On this one, I don't see a lot of shading, which is fine. 
Again, it's there just to demonstrate what this ink looks like. Twisby Eco with that extra fine nib, with that Van Diemen's Devil Black, really nice deep blacker colour here. Again, we can see it's fairly wet, 10 seconds and a minute. So as I said, we're now going to do some writing with the Visconti Breeze. So I'll reposition the mic. Now I'll do my wetness tests. So 10 seconds. Then one minute. After a minute, more or less dry. Certainly when we take a look at the other inks on this page, there's only really the Oxford Blue, which is drier. Both the Tranquility and the Writer's Blood still seem fairly wet. And that black, look at that, that was really having a hard time drying on this paper. With this turquoise ink, I'm seeing again some nice shading coming through. You know, we've got V, the S, the C, the T, the B. So it's coming out all over. Really nice shading colours, really nice ink. Let's turn the page. Yes, I can see the writing through the paper. Not enough to put me off using both sides. The reason why I don't use the other sides in here, these are used for my ink testing. So I like to have that clear side so I can do this check. So yeah, nothing showing through, no bleed through, nothing like that. Nothing coming through onto the next page. Nice performing ink. I really like this. As I said, this is the control paper because I think most people have either got this paper or they've had access and been able to try it out at some time. Let's move on to the first notepad. The endless recorder that we've just been using, that's an A5 size. These pads from Fabriano, they're a little bit smaller than A6. They measure at 10 centimetres by 14 centimetres. There's 40 pages in each notebook, which gives you a really good opportunity to test out the paper. So these books, they can be chucked into really any bag. And, you know, I can throw in there a Caveco Sport and I've got my nice fountain pen and my nice paper combination wherever I am. So I'm just opening this up just part way through. It's a nice white paper. It's got that velvety feel to it, which is really what you expect. I mean, the paper is said to be velvety. It's fairly thick. It's 100 GSM. The paper, well, as you can see, the way the books, the paper's actually starting to come out from there. I'm going to skip now right back to the front. This is where I've done my writing. So taking a quick look at this, certainly again stacked on my river. Let me just fetch that back in, move this over so we can see them both. There we are, that's better, isn't it? So the colours are very, very similar. That endless recorder has got a bit more cream in the paper than this, which is that more white. When I'm looking at this again, not seeing much of a difference with that diamine writer's blood. It's a very dark ink anyway. Seeing some lovely shading again coming through on that Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Seems to be slightly drier on here. The 10 seconds, it looks like it's a, a longer swipe, but certainly the one minute, although it's still wet, it doesn't appear to be as wet as we're getting on the Endless Recorder. The Diamine Oxford Blue, well, that seems to be the opposite. The 10 seconds doesn't seem as wet, but we're getting a smudge coming off after one minute. Then with that Devil's Black, to me, I don't see much change there. Let's fetch in and do our next writing sample. So I'll just reposition the mic. Can't quite fit turquoise in. Just going to move that paper up a bit for so our wetness tests. To me, that felt a little bit rougher than when I was writing in the Endless Recorder. It's as if there's a little bit more fibre and a little bit more feedback coming through. Still nice, still enjoyable, but it doesn't seem to have that same smoothness as I was getting on the Tomoe River paper. Drying times. So we've got 10 seconds. Then one minute. Then 
Then after a minute, it still seems quite wet, especially when we compare it against what we saw here on the Tomai River. It does seem a little bit wetter. So for me, on this velvety paper, it does seem to take a little bit longer to dry. Let's have a look on the other side. Well, look at that. I can just about make out something up here from the writer's blood, but I'm really, really having to look. So this is one you can use both sides of this paper, no problems. There's no show through, there's no bleed at all. Looking at the writing, no feather in that I can see. Nice crisp letters, nice crisp writing. So this here is the Velutata. Next one we're going to look at, the orange book, Pergamenata. I'm sorry if I'm really butchering these pronunciations. I do try my best. So again, I'm just going to open up part way through the book just so we can take a look at the plain paper. So this is not as white. This seems to be a bit more creamy. It's also, look at that, you can see my finger through it. This is parchment paper. And there we are, look, can you see that? You can see like the character in there. You can see the way that the fibers are all there. I actually really like the look of this paper. To me, a bit like baking parchment, it feels slightly greasy when I'm running my fingers over it. Not unpleasant, but yeah, it's really weird. Let's come and look at our writing. Let's fetch in that Tom A. Riff. But there we go. We can see them both side by side. On the diplomat era, to me, the writing is thicker on this parchment paper. So it looks like it's spread out a little bit. It also looks that there's a little bit more colour coming through there. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Dry time wise, looks very similar. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Although I do see a little bit of shading, I don't think there's as much as I see on that Tomoe River paper. Drying times on here though, after a minute, this one was burned dry. So it seems to be a little bit faster drying paper. The Pen BBS. Well, to me, the, the Oxford Blue on this paper here, it looks a lot bluer. It, it doesn't seem as dark as what I'm seeing on that Tomoe River paper. I also think the writing again seems slightly wider. That Twisby Eco with the Van Diemen's Devil Black. Again, the black that to me stands out a lot nicer. It seems to sit nice on the paper, not as wet again. So yeah, quite interesting that. Let's fetch in and do our live writing sample. Writing on there, it's very greasy. It feels like the pen is sliding over the paper. Whereas even on the Tomoe River paper, you can feel it. You can feel it dragging slightly. Here, it's as if, well, it is. It's like writing on grease. Really is, to me, not a pleasant experience. I do like the colour. I think, to me, the colour does pop a little bit. But when I'm writing, for me, I like that little bit of feedback. As I say here, it was nice and quiet to write with, but it just felt like it wasn't right. It felt like it was just, as I say, too greasy, too glidey for me. Drying times, 10 seconds. One minute. After a minute, very tiny smudge coming off there, but other than that, it's dry. So again, looking at this, it's nice. Still looks slightly wider. Now, I'm guessing because it's parchment, it sucks the ink into the paper a little bit, which, yeah, I can understand that. But even so, I don't see any feathering. Because it's parchment, it's actually 90 GSM, which is quite heavy paper, really, considering how see-through it is. If we look on the other side, there's no way I could write on that. You know, I can see everything that's coming through. So it's definitely showing through, but it's not bleeding through. There's, there's no actual bleed through at all. Even, even on this like tranquility where it's slightly lighter, you can still see everything that you've written. And if I tried to write on both sides, that would really confuse me. So I like this paper, but certainly I would say it's not something I would use for day-to-day -day writing. Okay, next we've got the Gofrata or embossed. So again, let's just open up. This paper, it feels more like cardboard, you know, thin cardboard. If we can look here, I don't know how well the camera will pick this up. There's actual lines running across. And if you run your finger down it, you can see how 
that this paper has been embossed so that it looks like each stripe and then there's a little stripe between them which is what you feel so it does feel rough i don't know if you can hear my finger there catching on it it's definitely i would say more on the white side so it's not as creamy as that parchment let's take a look at the front at our writing here we go just move this over slightly and i'll fetch in the tomai river again tag out of the way so looking here at the writing writer's blood again very similar but i would say this is slightly wetter than i was seeing on that tomai river paper the tranquility for me i can't see any shading at all on here so it doesn't look like this is a nice paper for shading also looks like it's slightly drier the oxford blue well this is the opposite isn't it that the tranquility that looked drier this one looks a lot wetter than it is on that tomai river again to me the blue pops more on this fabriano paper the twisby you know it's black again when you look at it to me i think it's slightly drier but i don't know that could just be me looking at it but i do try to keep all these tests as similar as possible to minimize anything that may come from essentially user error all writing That's quite unpleasant. I don't know if he could hear that on the mic. It's very rough. As I'm going over this lines here, the embossing, I can feel the pen bouncing along and it's almost as if I'm having to drag the pen over the paper. Still an interesting experience though, because as I say, you can feel it bouncing, which is unusual because I don't often get to feel that in any of my pens. Drying times, so 10 seconds. One minute. After a minute, we've still got a little bit coming off, but I would say it's less than what there is on the Tomai River paper. Let me move that up so we can actually see it. There we go. Again, no feathering coming through on this paper. One of the things that does surprise me, this, as I say, is very thick. 90 GSM, which is the same as a parchment. So it's really um, quite amazing how just the different ways of making paper can make such a difference to the whole experience. We get this out of the way. If I turn it over, so again, nothing coming through, not seeing anything at all. So nice paper, could be used for virtually anything. So this one here, this is the Gofferata, or the embossed paper. Next one we're going to look at, Vergata, which is laid paper. Definite colour difference. This is more like a creamy brown. Now, on the last one where we had the lines going across, if I look on here, I can see lines going down. But it doesn't feel at all rough. It feels really nice and smooth. The paper here on here is 85 GSM. So slightly thinner than the others. If I look over here, you can see, I don't know if it comes through on the camera, there's like a dark line going across. It looks like a, each quarter interval down the page. Then another one down here. I'm guessing that's something to do with the way they make this paper. Let's take a look at our writing. So there we go. I'll fetch in the Tomo River paper as well. To me, none of these inks really pop on here. I think that's because of the colour of the background more so than the ink. The Diplomat Era actually, to me, looks lighter on here. And I think it actually looks nicer. And I can see a tiny little bit of shading coming through there, mainly on that downstroke on that air. Little bits in the rest of the writing, but not overly much. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Again, I'm struggling to see much in the way of shading. Maybe on the top of that sea, but that could be more to do with my writing than the actual ink. The Diamine Oxford Blue. To me, this looks like it's a thinner line than what I've seen on that Tomoe River. Then the Van Diemen's Devil Black. You know, nice blacking this is also coming through as being wetter so if we look at all of them with the exception really of the tranquility they all look like they were wetter on these smudges it's time to write So 
So that doesn't feel as rough as the previous one did, but I can still feel a lot of feedback. I can hear a lot of feedback coming off that one. Again, I hope that the mic picked that up. It's actually not unpleasant, whereas that previous one, the embossed paper, was quite unpleasant. I would say this is, it's actually not too bad. There's nice feedback. It's not bouncing. It's not catching. It's not like I'm dragging the pen. It just seems to be flowing really nicely. Let's do our drying times. 10 seconds. Do you know I'm struggling to spell today? Do you know I'm doing I'm really struggling with my writing. Look at that. How can someone mess up the number 10? One minute. After a minute, similar that we're getting with all the other ones, slightly drier than what I'm seeing on the Tom I River paper, but you know, we're still getting that smudge come off. Another paper, again, I'm not seeing anything in way of feathering. It looks quite nice. I just think maybe because the paper is that more of a cream colour, that to me, the ink, it just, it just doesn't pop off the paper. Let's turn over. So this one, again, we can see the writing coming through. It's not bleeding through but I can see it coming through from the other side. I would be happy using both sides of this paper. I'd be quite happy with that. I don't think it would bother me, especially once I've got ink on there. And I think sometimes with these smaller notepads, you really need to be able to use both sides so you can get the most out of it whilst you're out and about. But overall, again, it's quite nice. So this one is the Vergata. Next up, we've got Ecologica, recycled paper. This one is 80 GSM. So open it up, take that sheet there. So again, this is an off-white colour. I see this on most recycled papers I use, especially where it's not been overly bleached. So we've got lots of these little dots coming here. I'm guessing this is part of the recycling process, maybe when there's something in there which shouldn't be. Paper feels really nice. I say it's 80 GSM. It's smooth. It doesn't feel like there's much of a coating on here. It's not smooth to the state that it's glassy you know you can definitely feel yourself there's my fingernail or what's left of it running over it take a look at the writing which in that tomo river so we've got them side by side again so to me with this the writer's blood looks very similar I can't really see much of a difference between the two. The Pilot Custom Heritage. Again, I'm starting to see some shading coming through again on this paper. So unlike the last couple of papers where I think there was nothing in the way of character, starting to see that coming through again here. Certainly seems to have dried faster at the one minute stage than that Tomai River paper. The Oxford Blue. Again, I'm not seeing much in the way of a difference. If anything, I would say this is a bit more muted on this paper. I'm not seeing much in the way of a difference between the Tomai River and this. If I had to call out anything, I would say the colour's a little bit more muted on this paper, but that could be because of the cream background. And then the Devil's Black, again, I don't see much of a difference. Let's do some writing. I think with the exception of that velvety one at the start, this was the nicest writing experience. It's nice and smooth. It's not glassy. You can feel the pen as it's writing, but it's not like a drag. It's just nice. And you know that the words are coming out as that pen glides over the paper. Let's do our drying times. 10 seconds. One minute. So after a minute, this one's more or less dry. So I would say this paper, definitely faster drying time than we've seen with all the other papers. Of them all that we've looked at so far, I think this is the one I would reach for. I just wish it was more of a white background than this cream. Let's take a look over the page. Again, no show through. Quite happily use both sides of this page. No bleed through at all. In terms of the writing, don't see any feathering at all anywhere. So this one was the Ecologica, the recycled paper. Next one we move on to, Natural. Let's take a look inside. So again, we've got this more creamy colour. I'm guessing by natural, it means it's unbleached. This is nice feeling paper. It's 85 GSM. It's nice and smooth. 
I can't see any lines or anything there coming through on the paper. Let's just turn it over. There's nothing showing through. No watermarks or anything. It's just that cream colour. And it's a personal thing. I just don't like cream coloured paper. Let's go back to look at our writing. There we are. Let's fetch it in. That. There we go. So looking at this, the writer's blood seems to have spread more on this paper, but doesn't seem to be as wet. The Pilot Custom Heritage, again, I see nothing in the way of shading on here. It just seems really flat. The Pen BBS, that Oxford Blue, again, it's another one. It looks slightly darker to me. Could be because it's on the cream background. So it's we're not doing an exact colour for an exact colour match with the background. And that, yes, I know that can affect the way the colour is coming through. Uh, devil's black you know black is black none of these seem as wet especially when we get to that one minute mark the 10 second mark they seem very similar to what i was getting on the tom i river paper let's do some writing That seems scratchy to me. It seems to be like it's another one where there's a slight drag against the paper. So that nib, you know, normally is quite smooth. And in that one, it was feeling more, I don't want to say rough because it's not rough, but it feels like there's some resistance coming through as I'm writing. It's not unpleasant, but it's still something you have to be aware of. Drying times. So after 10 seconds, it still looks quite wet, doesn't it? One minute. After a minute, a little tiny bit coming off, but more or less dry. And that's the same as what we were seeing on all the other one minute smudges on here. This paper, I do see some feathering. Now, when I look at it by eye, I don't see too much, but I really see it once I start to zoom in on a photo. So of all the pads we've looked at, this is the one where there's that chance of getting some feathering. Let's look over the page. Well, we're definitely getting some show through. You know, look at that. Again, I'd be quite happy to use both sides of the paper, but what's putting me off uh, here, you know, you can see all over where we've got bits of the ink that they're not fully bleeding through, but they're starting to come through. So I'd have to really think about using this and using both sides of the paper, because if we get a really wet pen, it could end up coming through quite a bit. Yeah, it's still fine for me. So this one, this is the natural. The last pad, the final one. Mark Hatter. This is felt marked. So again, I'm just going to open to any page. This paper is 95 GSM. And with the exception of the embossed, this is one that actually feels the thickest. It's not quite cardboard, but it's definitely feeling that it's getting thicker towards that. The paper feels rough whether I'm going down or across. Remember, with the embossed, it felt rough going down, but not across. And with the laid, it didn't really feel rough at all. But this one, it definitely does. Looking a bit more closely, I can see it's got like a checkerboard pattern there. It's more obvious with the lines going down than those which are going across, but I can definitely see that. Again, it's more of that creamy colour rather than white. Let's go to our writing. You'll have to excuse this here. That's not feathering. It's where I accidentally smudged it. So looking at this, colour-wise, it's not too bad. We've got some shading coming through here on the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. You know, on that P, on the C, on the T here, on the O, on the S. So some character coming through. Not as much as I see really on the Tom I River paper, but it's there. It's a little bit of character. The Oxford Blue, again, I think it's because it's on cream paper, so it looks a little bit more subdued, but still nice. You can still tell that it's a nice, deep, dark blue. The Twisby Eco, to me, and this may just be me looking weird at this, but it looks like the writing's a little bit finer on here than it is on that Tommy River paper. May not be the case, but it just looks like that looking at it from here. In terms of wetness, it seems to be drier on virtually all of them, including the black. So a faster drying paper. Let's do our writing.
Again, it's another one feels a bit rougher when you're writing. We expect that though when we were looking at the paper itself because it felt like there was that roughness to it. It doesn't feel as bad as the embossed paper, I will give it that, but there's definitely some nice feedback. I really actually enjoyed it. As much as I'm saying that it's there, it's not unpleasant. Unlike with the embossed where it was unpleasant, this is nice. There's a little bit of drag on the paper so you can feel that you're writing. I think that comes through over the mic, so hopefully you can hear that. But to me, it was actually quite pleasant. I just don't like the yellowness of the paper. So let's turn it over. No show through at all. Nothing coming through there. Quite happy to use both pages, both quite happy to use both sides of each sheet. No feathering either. Really nice, really pleased with this one. I think of them all, I think this might be the one that if I was to go and buy a pad, I might actually look at this one because yes, the colour's off, but I could live with that. But the writing experience, that was actually quite nice. So this one is the Marcata. Let me just fetch all the pads in so we can take one final look. So I've had to squeeze these in a bit so I could get them all on camera. But we've got here the Valutata, Pergamenata, Gofrata, Vergara, Ecologica, Natural, and Marcata. This to me was a really good experiment, allowing me to look at seven different papers from the same manufacturer. And to me, it really does highlight how paper can make such a difference to the entire writing experience. As I said, I was pleasantly surprised how much I actually like the Marcata, even though it's that creamy paper. But I was also quite pleased with how much I like the parchment, even though it shows through so much. So they've all got these unique properties, and I think it's going to be interesting for me over the next few months to try out different pens on here, to try out different inks, and to find the ones which best fetch out all the properties of both the pen, the ink, and the paper. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think of these Fabriano papers? Have you used them? Do you want to try using them? Are there any other papers that you can suggest it's worth me trying? I've already got a list, but I'd love additional recommendations to add on to that. Please drop a comment down below. Let's start looking and talking more about the paper as well as the pens and inks. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm to surface my content for other people. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.